Hi there Grade 8 and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Maths. I hope you're all well today and I hope you're keeping warm on this chilly morning. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, a very warm welcome to you and I hope you will continue to watch the Worksheet Cloud Maths videos and all the Worksheet Cloud videos for that matter. Um, those that, of you that have been with us for a while, I hope you enjoy this lesson. But let's get started. Okay, so we are going to continue to look at surface area and volume. And today in particular, we are going to look at volume and capacity. So let's get going with today's lesson. Okay, so just to go over what volume and capacity of a right prism actually is. Volume, remember, of a 3D shape is the amount of space that it takes up. So if you put an object on a shelf or in a cupboard, how much space is that object actually taking up? And when we measure it, it's measured in cubic units. Um, so that it's millimeters cubed, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, or kilometers cubed, depending obviously on the size of the object. But that is the amount of space that it would take up sitting on a shelf or in a garage or wherever you are going to put the object. Okay. Whereas capacity is the amount of space that is inside the object. So in other words, it's the amount of, if it's liquid, how much liquid would be in the um, object, how much you could pour into an object, in other words. Um, so capacity is measured in milliliters, liters, and kiloliters. doesn't always have to be liquid, but very often we do use capacity to measure liquid. But what it is, is actually the amount of space inside the object, whereas volume is the amount of space that the object takes up. Okay, so just to revise, because I'm sure you do know this already, but how to convert the one to the other. So if we've got one milliliter, which is volume, um, sorry, which is capacity, the volume of that would be one centimeters cubed. Okay, if we've got one liter, which is the capacity, 1,000, that is 1,000 centimeters cubed. Okay, one kiloliter is the same as 1,000 liters, because we know that um, one kiloliter is 1,000 liters, and that will give me one meter cubed. Okay, so this is quite important to know when you are converting from volume to capacity or capacity to volume. Right, let's start. The formula for volume and capacity of a cube and a rectangular prism, we need to go over those formulas. We use the same formula, we'll work out the volume first and then we'll convert it to a capacity measurement. Okay, so for a cube, we know that a cube has all sides being the same length. So if we've given the measurement of one of the sides, we're just going to multiply it by um, itself three times. And there we have a cube, and there would be one side, there's another side, and there's another side. So if it was a rectangular prism, one would be the breadth, one would be the length, and one would be the height. But seeing as we know in a cube, they are all exactly the same measurement, we just say side times side times side. Okay. In a rectangular pr a prism, we use the area of the base of the prism times the height. Now let me just show you here, there's a rectangular prism. I've labeled that the length, that the breadth, and that the height. But you could actually use this as the base and go length times breadth, and then use that as the height. It makes no difference, guys, and I'm going to probably repeat that a couple of times in this lesson, because remember you are multiplying them all together. Okay, if you're multiplying them all together, it really doesn't matter which measurement you substitute into which um, in which part of the formula. All right, but whatever happens, you are going to end up with a cubic unit, okay? And then from there, you can convert to capacity, which will not be a cubic unit, but will be milliliters, liters, or kiloliters. Okay, let's start and see how we can practice this. All right, so we're calculating volume of some cubes. There's one cube, and that's quite small. It's eight centimeters. And we know because it's a cube, all the sides are the same length. The next cube will be 100 millimeters. All the sides of the cube are the same length. And the next one is 2 meters, so that's bigger. Um, and all the sides are the same length. All the edges, actually, not, I wouldn't say sides. Those are the edges, okay? So that edge, that edge, and that edge, all the same length. That edge, that edge, that edge, all the same length. That edge, that edge, and that edge, all the same length. But let's go ahead and work this out. Okay, so the volume of this first cube will be 8 times 8, which is 64, 
times another 8 and it's going to give me 512 centimeters cubed. Remember we are multiplying centimeters by centimeters by centimeters so that gives me centimeters cubed. Right, what is the next one? Volume, side times side times side again. This time it's 100 millimeters. So now remember 100 seems um, much bigger than 8 but remember this is millimeters so it's actually 10, 10 centimeters which is bigger than that but not that much. Okay, but we've got 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters, and we're going to end up with a million millimeters cubed. Okay, remember each time we're putting on another two noughts. So there's the next two, and there's the last two, in case you thought that that was a mistake. It is a million millimeters cubed when we times 100 by 100 by 100. Okay, and then the last one, we're going to do 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 will give me 8 meters cubed. It's very important to put that cubic um, sign in, the 3, the exponent 3, because that will tell us that that is the volume. Okay, remember, capacity is not measured in cubic meters or cubic units. It's measured rather in milliliters, liters, or kiloliters. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to convert these to capacity, and remember that. One milliliter is one centimeters cubed. One liter is a thousand centimeters cubed. One kiloliter is the same as a thousand liters, which we know. And a thousand liters is the same as one meter cubed. Okay, so the first one we've got is um, the eight centimeter cube. And that volume was 512 centimeters cubed. Um, to get that, it would be 512 milliliters. Because one centimeter cubed is one milliliter so whatever you have as your centimeters cubed here will give you your milliliter reading okay the next one we had our hundred millimeter cube and that ended up with a volume of a million millimeters cubed and to convert that we're going to go a million millimeters cubed can give me a thousand centimeters cubed so let me just explain that first because when we change from millimeters to centimeters we divide by 10 so if you change from millimeters squared to centimeters squared, you're actually going to move two places. You're going to divide by 100. So when you go from millimeters cubed to centimeters cubed, you're actually going to divide by 1,000. So your comma is going to um, move three places to the left. Okay, so just to go over that again, that exponent actually tells us how many more times one jump would be if I can put it like that one jump is from millimeters to centimeters if this was going millimeters to meters you would normally divide by a thousand that means you'd go a thousand a thousand and another thousand um, if you were doing millimeters cubed to meters cubed I hope that makes sense guys um, if it doesn't please don't forget you need to um, email grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com to get some clarity okay so a million millimeters cubed gives me a thousand centimeters cubed. Now up here, a thousand centimeters cubed, we can either use this one, because one is to one, so that will give me a thousand milliliters, or we can go straight to this one and say, well, that will give me one liter. All right, let's look at the next one, the two meters cubed. That gave us a volume of eight meters cubed, and we're going to convert that to capacity, eight meters cubed, will give me a thousand liters as it says here and that is eight kiloliters because eight thousand liters divided by a thousand gives me a kiloliter so that's eight kiloliters alternatively you could have just jumped straight from there to there okay right so you can see how important remembering this is because it helps us to convert all right so try this one calculate the volume of this rectangular prism here's our rectangular prism um, and with measurements of 4 meters, 3 meters, and 3 meters. Okay, so actually it's got a square base. Um, that's 3 meters, that's 3 meters. Now again, as I said earlier, you can actually multiply these together in any order. So let's work out the volume, length times breadth times height. It depends what you see the length as. If you see the length as that, that's absolutely fine. If you see the height is that, that's fine. If you see that the length and that the breadth and that the height, it doesn't matter. Okay, so 4 times 3 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Times 3 is 36. 
don't forget your exponent 36 meters cubed okay we now have to take that and convert that to the capacity of this prism in liters so one meter cubed is one kiloliter so 36 meters cubed gives me 36 kiloliters but i don't want it in kiloliters because it asked me for liters so i can't leave it like that i've got to go 36 kiloliters times a thousand to give me the number of liters so obviously we know that it's going to be 36,000 liters so the capacity of that rectangular prism is 36,000 liters but the volume is 36 meters cubed right everybody happy right what about this one calculate the volume of this cube yeah we've got the cube its measurements are 2,5 centimeters because it's a cube, we know that the length, the breadth, and the height are all exactly the same. So we can say that our formula is side times side times side. So we're going to go 2,5 times 2,5 times 2,5, all centimeters. Multiplying them together, remember we're going to get a cubic unit because we're working with volume. So we're going to end up with 15,625 centimeters cubed. Okay? You can definitely work that out on your calculator and double check. Um, but now we need to convert that to a, the capacity of this cube in liters and it asks us to round off to the second decimal place. Let's just work out the capacity first. As we know, one centimeter cubed, which is what we've got here, is one millimeter. So that to the millimeters is like for like. So we've got 15,625 milliliters. Okay. We now have to um, convert milliliters to liters which means we are going to divide by a thousand so actually our comma needs to move one two three places and we're going to end up with that as an answer in liters naught comma naught one five six two five okay liters but it did ask us to round off to the second decimal place so our second decimal place remembers our hundredths column so we need to look at the thousands column which is five and that is going to tell us what the unit in the hundredths column is going to be, what the amount in the hundredths column is going to be. So we'll end up with a capacity of 0, 2, sorry, 0, 0, 2 liters, and that's rounded off. So this cube has a volume of 15,625 centimeters cubed, but it has a capacity of 0, 0, 0, 2 liters. Okay, so now you try. There we go, you can always draw a representation of it, but you try to work out the volume and then the capacity in liters of a rectangular prism with edges 2 centimeters, 4 centimeters, and 7 centimeters. So pause the video now, you try and work it out, and when we get back, we'll go over it together. Right, how did you do? There we have our problem again. We've got to solve that problem. Uh, we've got to calculate, first of all, the volume of the prism, and then we've got to look at it in capacity sorry we've got to then convert that to capacity in liters okay so volume is length times breadth times height we're going to substitute it substitute in 2 times 4 times 7 2 times 4 is 8 8 times 7 will give us 56 centimeters cubed so that is the volume what now is the capacity okay so there we've got one centimeter cubed is one milliliter so 1 centimeters cubed, 56 centimeters cubed rather, that will give me 56 milliliters. But we're not interested in, in milliliters, we want to convert that to liters. So from milliliters to liters, we are going to divide by 1000, and we're going to end up with 0, 0, 056 liters. That is the capacity of that rectangular prism. I'm sure you all got that, I'm sure you're all absolutely fine with this. But remember, if you do have a query, you can either go back and watch the video from the beginning, or you can email grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. Right, let's look at this problem to solve. Okay, how many kiloliters of water would an Olympic-sized swimming pool hold if the measurements of the swimming pool are 50 meters long, 25 meters wide, and 2 meters deep? Okay, guys, if you can't visualize that, you can always draw a representation of a rectangular prism and put in those measurements. But if you can visualize it, we can go straight to the formula and just plug in. Okay, so our length is 50 meters, breadth 25 meters, and the height or the depth 
is two meters. Now remember what I told you in, earlier on in the lesson, it doesn't actually matter which way round you substitute these in because they are all multiplying together. Okay, so we've got 50 meters times 25 meters times 2 meters, and we're going to end up with 2,500 meters cubed. That is the volume of the swimming pool, but now we need to find out how many kiloliters that is, so we have to convert this to capacity. And we know that 1 meter cubed is equal to 1 kiloliter. So if that is the case, then 2,500 meters cubed is going to give me 2,500 kiloliters. That is a lot of water, guys. Okay, right, here's another problem for you to try. Calculate the volume and capacity in liters of an ice cream container that has a length of 13 centimeters, a breadth of 13 centimeters, and a height of 8,5 centimeters. Right, so once again, pause the video, see if you can work this out on your own, and let's see what happens when we come back and go through it together. Right, how did you do? Okay, so there we have our problem. Um, calculate the volume and capacity of in liters of an ice cream container that has a length of 13 centimeters, a breadth of 13 centimeters, and a height of 8,5 centimeters. Right, again, you can draw a representation, if that would make you feel better, of what this ice cream container sort of looks like, but you know that it probably has a length, and well, the length and the breadth is the same, so you could almost say it has a square base if you want to, and then the height is 8,5 centimeters. So, let's plug into our formula. We've got length times breadth times height, and that would be 13 times 13 times 8,5, and they are all centimeters. So 13 times 13 times 8,5 is going to give me 1,436,5 centimeters cubed. Okay, everybody happy with that? Can you visualize this ice cream container? Once again, if you can't, don't forget to actually um, draw a representation. Okay, now to take that to capacity, we have got one centimeter cubed is one milliliter. So if we've got 1,436,5 centimeters, that would give me 1,436,5 milliliters. Everybody happy with that? Okay, so now convert the milliliters to liters. Remember, we are going to have to divide by a thousand because we know that there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So that would end up giving us 1,4 liters, which means that the capacity of our ice cream container is 1,4 liters. Now, guys, if we think about it, when you open ice cream, if you open an ice cream container to check out the ice cream, the ice cream is not always going to go right to the very, very top. Generally, there is a little bit of space so that when the ice cream freezes, it can expand. So probably that's going to be about a one liter tub of ice cream. Um, okay, with the 0.4 liters left a little bit empty for expansion because we all know that when ice cream is put into a container, it's put in liquid form and then it is frozen. So they actually then will grow, if that makes any sense. So they'll probably put on the outside of the container that it is a one liter container. All right, I hope you're all fine with that, guys. Um, thank you for watching today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure you're all gonna be fundies at working out volume and capacity of different 3D shapes. Right, thank you for watching, and I, I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye for now.